Hi, welcome back to the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology. I'm Beckett, filling in for Professor Curtis Mitch, who's still continuing to finish his work on the Ignatius Catholic Study Bible. Today, we're meditating on the readings for Thursday of the 19th week of Ordinary Time. So let's begin by simply stating that there is a wrong way to receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation, just as there is a not wrong way. And what do I mean by that? The wrong way is to confess your sins without any desire or plan to change your life. And what's the not wrong way? Well, to begin to answer that, there is only one right way, and that is to have perfect contrition. The not wrong way, which is not exactly the right way, is to offer imperfect contrition. So, what's the difference between perfect and imperfect contrition? Perfect contrition is repenting for sins because sin offends God. Imperfect contrition is repenting for sins because sin's consequences offend you. What do I mean by that? Another way to look at that is that perfect contrition is this. Going to confession because you truly love God and you feel sorrow because of how your sins have hurt your relationship with him. Imperfect contrition means that you're sorry for your sins because you're afraid of going to hell. Now, don't misunderstand me. Both perfect and imperfect contrition are valid forms of receiving the sacrament of reconciliation. Both are acceptable to God. Both warrant absolution from your priest confessor. Yet both perfect contrition, excuse me, yet perfect contrition is far better than imperfect contrition. You could also look at it this way. I hate you. Picture a husband saying that to his wife. But then the husband repents and goes back to his wife and says, I'm sorry I said I hate you because I'm afraid of getting divorced. Who would want that kind of apology? Well, a good Christian wife would likely offer her husband forgiveness because she forgives she, for, she forgives as many as 77 times, as our Lord explains in today's gospel. But it's not the kind of contrition she would want. Not really. Apologizing out of fear of divorce is imperfect contrition. But if that same husband would have said instead, I'm sorry I said I hate you because I love you and my words hurt you, and I promise to never say them again. Well, that's a sincere, that is a sincere apology. That's contrition that comes from the heart. That's perfect contrition. That's what we want from others, and that's what God wants from every one of us every time we enter into the confessional. And as we conclude, let's consider what this means in the light of today's readings for Mass. The first reading illustrates the prophet Ezekiel demonstrating an allegory of what is about to happen to Jerusalem, the Babylonian exile. But there's a second allegory being acted out, an allegory of the wrong and not wrong way to receive the sacrament of reconciliation. So the story is that the people of God were in a covenantal relationship with God, which can be likened to a marital relationship. For about 500 years, God's people repeatedly sinned through idolatry, which we can also liken to the sin of adultery. They were as faithless as an adulterous spouse. Over the centuries, God's people would repent, but then they would fall back into idolatry or spiritual adultery. And why? Well, one way to look at it is through imperfect contrition. They were sorry for offending God, but not out of true love for God, not because their sinfulness hurt God. No, they repented imperfectly. They repented because the consequence of their sin limited their freedom, hampered their economy, weakened their city, and made their lives like a living hell. God wanted them to be a people after his own heart, like the way King David had been, as we read in 1 Samuel 13. And he wants you to be after his heart too. The fall of the kingdom of David exemplifies 
how we repeatedly, excuse me, the fall of the kingdom of David, that is, when it, it, when it fell, when King Nebuchadnezzar sacked Jerusalem and brought his people into exile, it exemplifies how repeated imperfect contrition deteriorates relationships. Their imperfect contrition became more and more imperfect until finally their contrition was totally wrong. They had no plan to change their life because they lost the desire to change their life. This is also played out in Jesus' parable today. The servant, whose entire debt was forgiven by his master, had no plan or desire to change his life. His selfish nature is what got him into debt with his master in the first place, and his selfish nature is what eventually got him handed over to the torturers. If he had perfect contrition, he would have seen how greatly his debt offended his master. Then he would have understood how greatly his master loved him by forgiving his entire debt. But he saw and understood none of this. Do we see this in our own lives? Do we understand that God will forgive us 77 times, a symbolic number that Buzz Lightyear might describe as to infinity and beyond? God will always forgive us if we ask. But we have to ask with perfect contrition. We have to be truly sorry for how much our sins, our debt, hurts God's heart. And we have to have a desire and a plan to stop sinning, to stop offending God. How do we do this? First off, it's all written out for us in the act of contrition, which the priest's which our confessor priest asks us to pray right before he, in persona Christe, gives us absolution. Let's pray it right now, just to take a look at it. Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. Let's pause. There's perfect contrition. I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. Let's go on. I detest all my sins because of thy just punishment. Okay, there's a touch of imperfect contrition. I detest my sins because I'm going to be punished by them, and justly so. But now we return to perfect contrition. But most of all, because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Amen. That's perfect contrition right there. All of that. Bring it in together, all folded together. The act of contrition is how we make perfect contrition. Secondly, we have to ask for the grace of perfect contrition. When God gives us this grace, he also opens the door to a deeper relationship with him. For if we have the grace of perfect contrition, then we also see a little more clearly how much he loves us, how much he wants to forgive us, and how much our sins wreck our love for him and our relationship with him. So, before you go to the sacrament of reconciliation, which the church recommends at least once a year, but I recommend at least once a month, if not once a week, Meditate on the words of the act of contrition and ask God to give you the grace of perfect contrition so that you can be, we can be, as perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, who forgives infinitely and who also shows us how to forgive infinitely those who offend us. May God bless you. If you like this video, please like it, hit the like button, and then share it. And also subscribe to this YouTube channel. Once again, thank you again for watching, and God bless.